Hey, Cinema Makeup School friends, fans, students, and fans. I am here today with Andrew Velasquez. He is a celebrity makeup artist, cosmetologist, and educator at Cinema Makeup School, as well as on his own platform. So we're going to chat with him today about his career and what advice he may have for you while you are stuck at home. So Andrew, thank you so much for yeah, joining uh, me today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. I really appreciate it, and I know all the students appreciate it as well. Now, I've seen a lot of your demos at the school and just always blown away by what you can do quickly just for the students. Um, tell me a little bit about your beginnings as a makeup artist. I love teaching so much. I think that's the root of what I, why I do what I do. Um, but I come from East Los Angeles, California. I went to the Los Angeles Music and Art School as a kid, and that's where I discovered my passion in art for, um, well, my love and passion for art. Um, I first started to draw, paint, and sculpt, and then I decided to go to fashion school right after high school and went into cosmetology school because that was kind of just connected with each other. And then I started working at MAC Cosmetics at the age of 18, where I just grew tremendously and wanted to try pretty much every role as far as managing, education, product development, event coordinator. So I grew a lot, but always kept my freelance and my portfolio active and wanting to grow that outside of being a MAC artist. Um, I was with them for about 11 years, and then I was recruited by Anastasia Beverly Hills as her first national makeup artist, where I still continued to grow the portfolio and still continued to have you know opportunities with some of the celebrity clientele that I developed at MAC. After 15 years of retail cosmetics, I decided to go solo, open up a small studio with just one chair, and then expanded and then got two chairs, and then now we just hit our year anniversary to opening our first salon spa, which has four hair chairs, two makeup chairs, manicure, pedicure chair, massage room, facial room. So we went from like 200 square feet to 1600 square feet, still freelancing, still educating, because that's again, the core of why I am the artist that I am. And I love it. I love this industry. I love giving back to our future professionals and seeing them come to life and just being a part of like their, you know, journey in this, in this career. Oh, that's so good. And I, I love that your, your story really does showcase starting small, like you had one chair and now you have a whole salon with lots of things that it offers. And a lot of folks, I think in all careers think, I just want it all now. If I just can't have right. a full salon and a full career right now, why even bother? So talk to me a little bit about your experience and challenges you might have seen as you were growing to the point you are now. Even going back to like high school, the reason I left it was because I was being bullied and because I was weird and because I was different and I was dying my hair and playing with makeup. So it was dangerous, you know, and I was being jumped. And, and so I basically asked my school counselor what I could do to kind of expedite that situation. And because I had a lot of credits in art, I was able to graduate um, earlier at 16 and just take my GD and started going to uh, fit him for fashion merchandising. And that's where I finally felt accepted with other creative artists that were passionate, also weird. Um, and then just started working at Mac was a whole other game. Like it just, it, this was in the early 2000s and it was just when Mac was like really it's as far as makeup art cosmetics and, um, even that was a journey in, within itself. You know, I grew up with them. I was 18. Like, I spent 11 years of my life, pretty much all of my 20s there. And, you know, I never, I wasn't really the best artist at the time. And I was vulnerable and honest and would ask my senior artists and my trainers to provide feedback, even though it might hurt my feelings and I might not be happy with the response that I was going to get. But I still embrace that feedback because I wanted to grow and I, I, I put kind of like the ego aside and more soul into the work to let that let the craft speak for itself. It was a struggle. It was a lot of no's, a lot of interviews, a lot of you need to work on this. But I kept going. I kept going back and I would I would practice on my fine line work. I would practice on my blending. I would practice on my airbrush. Body makeup used to be one of my biggest like intimidated mediums of makeup in general now it's like my favorite thing you know i was like i'm gonna master it that's one thing that i really want to be an expert at and now 
I'm in the process of working on a book um, that I just finished writing, and it's going to uh, also showcase a lot of the body art makeup that I'm inspired by. I, I love that you, you push yourself like this thing that scared you. You yeah. went and like face that head on. So there's a lot of things that our aspiring artists can do that in any in any field that they're in. But there's there's something that you had mentioned in that last bit about going to your peers and your colleagues and your higher ups to ask for feedback. Talk about the power of feedback and how you can get it in your mind that it's a good thing. Yeah, I'll never forget this one time. Um, I was totally not prepared, but I saw I would get notifications for jobs and different positions within Mac. Um, I think I had been with the company for, I don't know, three years. And there was a senior artist position. <laughs> and I was, what? 18, 19, 21. I, I was totally not ready for that position. But I was like, I need to interview for it. I just want to experience the interview um, just to see what it's like, even though I might, I might not be at the caliber that they expect, which I completely was not. But I remember mocking up this whole PowerPoint and just this whole presentation. And I was so excited to show it, but just not ready. You know what I mean? And they, and they can tell that I was really eager and excited. And and I came in with just honesty. I came in with like, listen, I'm, I know I've been with the company for only three years and I've only had training experience and I haven't been a senior artist, but I want this experience to be more about uh, feedback and what I need to work on for the future. So when I am prepared, I can come back and revisit this, uh, this interview. And so I think they appreciated that and they liked my presentation, but the technical aspect and the facilitation part and the public speaking part is what I needed to work on. So that's the feedback that I got. And guess what I did? I went home. Um, I started taking online courses for public speaking. I started getting, you know, like my, my friends and just practicing with them in my room. And then I just got better at it and better at it. And, and I came back and I finally interviewed again. And that's when I finally joined Mac corporate. It, it paid great. off at the end. Yes. And that's a, something that I think a lot of uh, artists don't realize that if they, they can't speak well, uh, you can train that. That is something that you can learn. And wherever your deficiencies are, you might be the most amazing artist, but you still need to be able to communicate. And I feel like you've done a great job because you're a wonderful speaker. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. I, honestly, I feel that like every position that I've had has helped me in the journey with what I've experienced in general, just because specifically three years ago through cinema makeup school i was um asked to audition for a reality competition show uh it was called american beauty star and yeah i think the public speaking experience like 100 percent helped in that element because i was not only directed to be a makeup artist and hairstylist and, and do con conceptualizing but i was also directed to be a personality in front of tv and so Nowadays, you kind of have to have a little bit of more than just one, you know, strategy. Like you have to have all the experiences. You can't just be a creative makeup artist. You have to be a public speaker. You have to be uh, almost a salesperson too. You have to be almost a therapist at, at times with your clients. You know what I mean? So it's, you're wearing a lot of hats in this role for sure. Yeah, lots and lots of hats and you do wear them well. Like, And it's beyond that, even being a business man. And right being able to build your brand and your your marketing is so on point. I was actually telling Andrew before this interview how impressed I was with his website because, you know, a website is something that can make or break you. You could be amazing, but if your marketing is off, it says a lot. So talk to me about how you've built up your branding and, you know, did it start off shaky and now it's good or were you always just good at it? No, it definitely started off shaky. Uh, uh I remember when Instagram was born and Anastasia and her daughter, Norvina, also known as Claudia Soiree, sat me down and because I was a national makeup artist for Anastasia at Beverly Hills and they were like, you need to join Instagram. And I was like, eh, no, I'm not really into it. I already have Facebook. I already have LinkedIn. Like that's enough for me. I don't think I'm interested. Like it's something for like the kids, you know, but Claudia was like, no, this is the next big thing. If you don't join it, I promise you're not going to grow. Like, as, as, as an entrepreneur. And, and so I really took that and, and thought like, well, it was coming from Claudia herself and she had a lot of ideas and she's really the reason why I was with the company. I finally joined Instagram and then just picking back off, off of their uh, inclusive inclusivity with the community and adding them into their posts and tagging them for credit and trade for products. 
they're really the pioneers of that. And so I took that into my own kind of brand and, and started making my own, you know, content based off of that. And I started with Wix. I started with, then I moved on to Squarespace. And then, you know, I, I would educate myself on how to uh, utilize like different word search engines, for example, Google, Yelp. I mean, there's so many out there, right? But honestly, you can't, it, you, it's not a one man job. It's not a one person job. I've had to, I've then had to hire a team to help. So there is a technologist that helps me design the website because now we're, we're on WordPress, which is a completely different platform that I was not really aware of. It's like a foreign language. You have to know data coding and I'm creative. Like, I'm like, I don't know how to do all that. I, these numbers like scare me, you know? But it's to the point where I got trained enough to maintain it on my own and managing my own social media, but also having the help of the staff. So like the other hairstylists, the other makeup artists also coming in as a community and it's a team effort. It, it, it can't be just one person. So everyone kind of has like their part into um, what showcases their strengths really. Yes. And that's something that I want to drive home to everyone. All of the artists that are out there is like, I am a technologically savvy person, but I did not build my website. I had somebody else build my website and teach me enough where I can maintain it. Let people do the things that they're good at. You don't have to do Mm -hmm. everything, but it's such a worthwhile investment because putting together a nice website will just get you more work. Because people see it and they're like, this is a professional. Yeah. And even things like making sure that there are sound bites and words that are attached to your, to your specific website. So if there is somebody, for example, new to Los Angeles and they're just Googling Los Angeles makeup artists, I'm one of the first ones to come up on the first page. I didn't even know that was a thing like that. So that those words need to be connected somehow. I, I honestly can't explain it to you how it's done, but I know that that coding is infused into the website. So when someone does search for that, it pops up, you know what I'm saying? So just being knowledgeable of those terms, because I I had no idea about about that. Search engine optimization is like a whole other art form of its own. So Mm -hmm. trust the people who know how to do this (laughs) and outsource some of that work, please. Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone has their strengths and everyone has their specialties. So if you come together as a team and you utilize each other's strengths, then together you can just really grow as a brand for sure. Yes, totally. So again, back to your business and your your career, Uh, American Beauty Star was like a big step for you uh it seems like that was so much fun and i I don't see like too many reality shows about makeup anymore but what was that experience like for you it was crazy and bizarre and fun and exciting and scary and everything all in one nutshell i mean the whole process just took such a long time so much admiration for people that have been on like project runway or um rupaul's drag race or you know what i mean the just the amount of time and energy they put into creating their 10 minute video that showcases their, their personality and their work to just audition for that. And then to be uh, sequestered, just kind of like we are now in quarantines, but on a, you know, production um, environments where I literally just saw my hotel room. Prior to that, I had just finished working on America's Next Top Model as a hairstylist. And so I saw how, the models were treated and I saw how they were in this quarantine frozen set. That's, that's how they, those are the terms that are, that are used. So when you're on a frozen set, that means that there is no um, vocalizing allowed unless you're in front of the camera. And this is a strategy that is encouraged by production to maximize your energy and to really just kind of save your voice for camera time. So also to like avoid things being shared from past episodes um, and just to maintain the continuity of television and the way it's edited. But I had never experienced that as being the talent. You know what I'm saying? I'd seen it on the outside being behind the camera, but being in front of the camera, also doing the work, also being judged off of my personality, my work, the craft, and then not getting involved in a lot of the drama that is real because it's reality TV and there's real drama that's involved with that. I really had to channel my Zen, Andrew, and uh, because we were not allowed to have our devices or con- contact with our outside world, I brought my yoga mats, I brought my, my, my sketch pad, my pencils, my color pencils, I brought 
my old school like iPod that has no Wi-Fi. Back to my fundamentals, back to my roots, drawing, writing. That's why I wrote my book. I wrote 300,000 words on my downtime and meditated and just tried to stay focused while I was in front of the camera. And I just, at the end of the day, you know, we would shoot two episodes and then interviews and tutorials in between. So they were like 14 hour days. I wanted my work and the craft to just speak for itself versus drama and just wanting camera time and airtime. I didn't know about a frozen set that's new for me because I haven't worked Girl. in reality at all. That sounds crazy, but good training for our current situation. Isn't that weird? It's As weird. I was saying that, that's so weird. As I was saying that, I'm like, wait, I'm in a quarantine environment now. I'm just, we're now producing our own things with our own devices. <laughs> yes, and at least you can stay connected. But yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different. So you had somewhat of this quarantine training and a lot of our, our viewers and our students, you know, this is the first time they're experiencing anything like our current situation in the world. Um, but it also does reflect a little bit when industry work slows down and you may have to be staying Absolutely. at home. What kind Absolutely. of things can they be doing? So, I mean, I'm in the same boat, you guys. I had to close my salon. I'm not teaching at cinema makeup school. Uh, we're all being quarantined and on lockdown and so I'm working from home and I'm doing digital content and I'm creating tutorials and I'm working on my face charts and I'm perfecting my blending techniques. I'm perfecting my fine line work. I'm going through my kits. I'm reorganizing all of my inventory and throwing out things that have been expired and streamlining the kits and just making that look better and more professional. I'm redoing the website. I'm organizing galleries. I'm creating blog content. I'm networking with other brands. I'm reaching out to cosmetic companies and creating content for them. I'm, I'm collaborating with my husband because he lives with me. And so he's the only other person that I can work with. And so I'm helping him with his personal uh, fitness industry. And then on my downtime, I meditate a lot. I'm doing yoga at home. I hike when I can. Well, I meditate first thing in the morning, just five minutes on my own, just practicing my breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, letting the air inflate through the belly. And when I exhale, I say the words, I literally say the words relax, like just kind of whispering it. And it's better than coffee. It's better than espresso or any kind of energy drink out there because that revitalizes me. So we forget that we, we have oxygen around us and we're blessed with that. And that really um, can recharge your brain. You know, we need oxygen to function. So the more you're practicing that breathing technique and the meditation is going to help you a lot, especially with a lot of the stress that can come through finances, because I'm, again, I'm in the same boat and I've experienced the same anxieties and uh, worries. So, you know, there's other things that you can do out there to create revenue by, um, creating, you know, digital content that you can sell on a, on a digital platform. Zoom is amazing, which we're utilizing now. So I'll be doing like a skincare routine live thing on Instagram this Friday, but I'm also going to offer the Zoom thing to see how that works and maybe take donations for that, you know? So yeah, this is a, this is a really good time to reflect and you're never going to be the same after this. This is a good time to rebrand yourself and adapt to what is happening and not, you know, get too depressed about all the news and the nervous energy that is out there. Uh, go out minimally when you, only when you have to, you have enough toilet paper, then stay home, you know, like you don't need that much toilet paper. And yeah, just kind of like escaping the news when you can, you know, if you have been a freelance makeup artist and you are a sole proprietor, I know that uh, our mayor for Los Angeles has extended uh, unemployment, which is available now for uh, sole proprietor and LLC. So if you know those words and you are uh, a one man or one woman business, that's another option for financial assistance. There are some options out there for you, but you know, stay focused and do work on your craft while you can. This is a really good opportunity, especially with the digital world. If you haven't already dove into your online branding, exactly. now's the time to focus on that because people are at home and they want to know about you. They want to know about the other humans in the yeah. world that are doing things. Some advice that I learned once at a marketing workshop was to not overwhelm yourself with so many platforms and only pick the three that make sense for your target market and your audience and what you want to attract. So for me, because I'm an instructor um, and I teach, 
uh, YouTube and Instagram are great because they're platforms for me to show my personality, but also have step-by-step -step instructional tutorials that people can save and watch on their own. Um, and another one that I really incorporate is LinkedIn because um, it helps me connect with other cosmetic brands that are seeking for educators like myself that want that personality to help them, you know, um, educate their clientele or their, or their staff. So pick three that really makes sense for you. Maybe you're really funny and um, you write really well. Twitter is great for that. If you're a great dancer and you really move well, then utilize TikTok. And if you have, I don't know, banter and you're really good at um, engaging with others and Snapchat. So just really research on which of those platforms make sense for your target audience and uh, the people and the client that you want to attract, basically. Really great advice. So thank you for all of that. Now, before we uh, sign off, um, do you have any upcoming projects that you want to share? Uh, I just finished working with Christina Aguilera at her Las Vegas residency, which was really fun. Um, upcoming projects. I mean... <laughs> Well, the book, I'm working on the book. I just finished writing 300,000 words, so now I'm working on shooting the content. And it's an, it's essentially a body art makeup book, and it's in homage to my culture, because I'm Mexican-American. Um, I'm also being raised in East LA, so there's a lot of like East LA references that are gonna be infused into that. So you're um, telling me the, the book is about the thing that you were scared of. Yes. And you pursued, and now it's yeah. become a, a thing. Like a cornerstone of your career. Yeah, I just feel an obligation to leave something behind. I don't know, I leave a message. And, you know, I as a kid, I suffered through a lot of depressions and anxieties and um, went to 16 plus years of therapy that have been honestly like my savior. And my craft being an artist has also been um, a big part of, you know, why, uh, what makes me happy and what makes me passionate. And I want to share that. And I want to share how you can come from, you know, a poor little East LA boy to a successful man in Echo Park with your own salon and your own business and being an entrepreneur and your own brand, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, the dreams that you have aspired to, to do for yourself, they are possible. I 100% I guarantee you that. And just believe it, know it, trust the process. And during these times, really manifest what you, what it is that you want to attract for yourself in your career so that's i think my biggest takeaway from this whole experience is first of all the virus is not um really caring if you're poor or if you're rich or it's going to affect everybody in a way so as humans we're all connected like this is literally proof of that we're all one and at the end of the day we need to have each other and have each other's backs um, so this is a great way to to be there for others and service others, you know, ver ver uh, on a virtual kind of uh, platform. Wonderful. Yeah. That is fantastic advice. And that that's something that I, I hold very strongly in my uh, my ethics and my morals is like in a time like this, what is it that you can offer to the community? Because that's mm -hmm. what's going to help people connect with you. And we exactly. all have something to offer, whether it's our experience, it's entertainment, or it's education. Yeah. We all have something. So please go out there and chase those dreams, manifest what it is that you're doing. Any last uh, nuggets of knowledge for our, our viewers? Just continue to always be a student. As I am 20 years in this industry, I'm still a student at heart. I'm an educator, but... I still want to learn every day. So that's what I'm taking uh, advantage of this downtime is to, to really just better myself. So I encourage you to do the thing. Thank you so much, Andrew. If Thank you guys want to know you. more about Andrew, you'll go to his website, andrewvelasquez.com. You can also find him on Instagram. Uh, what was your Instagram handle again? It's at andrewvelasquez underscore. Underscore. I knew there was like a little thing there. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Velasquez underscore. So I'll definitely link those for you guys to check him out. Mary Lou, thank you so much. Cinema Makeup School. I miss you guys. Mwah. Stay safe.